Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays here on The Pagan Perspective, and this week we're talking about paying for pagan classes. This week's topic came from Christina, who asked, how do you feel about paying for pagan classes, such as Obod, O-B-O-D, the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids, or, and they named another one and provided a link to it, do you feel that it's worth the money? Do you think all the information presented in these classes can be found in books and online? So, hi, my name's Kara. I'm a witch and a pagan who has been on the internet for about 10 years, and I offer things online um, in the way of teaching people that are paid for. <laughs> so, I definitely have a bit of a bias in this case. I come from the side that is not only a consumer of this type of education, I have paid other people for courses, online courses. I have paid for in-person workshops, classes, things like that. So I not only come from that side of the equation, but also as someone who is relatively newer, it's not like I've been doing this for 30 years like some people, but who also is on the side of being someone who is offering things and trying to come up with a fair number to put on things that matches or strikes a balance as much as possible between what we know is our work's inherent worth and what we feel people will actually pay for it and think that we deserve for the work. So... If you would like to have more one-on-one -on -one conversations about this, if you are also someone who is in the spiritual business area and you want to chat with me about how people don't understand why we charge things that we do, I would love to have those conversations personally. I don't want anyone in this video to feel like I'm trying to get you to buy stuff, so I don't really want to stay too much on that. I don't want to sound too preachy about it, but it's definitely, this is a huge topic and it's something that, yeah, you can get a lot of insight to if you start to be someone who is trying to charge for your work or if you talk to someone who does that and kind of learn more about it. So what I want to do in this video is keep it a little more generalized, general advice, and again, striking a balance between those two sides of myself as a business owner type of person, as an educator, and as a consumer of this type of stuff. So to begin with, as with everything, there's no black and white answer that's going to fit across the board. Generally speaking, I will say, because I feel like that's the energy that needs to be put forward, paying for pagan classes is worth it. In a general sense, I want to say that and put that out into the universe. At the same time, of course, we know that one thing is not like the other is not like the other when it comes to paganism and when it comes to any business, right? Because we're not centered around a central authority because not everyone is coming from, you know, there's not necessarily a pagan business school out there where we're all going to get our degrees and say like, yep, we've done all this work and now we've proven that we're worth this much money, right? Like that's not what happens. And um, people have different levels of training, different things that we've done, different experiences. You're going to resonate with different teachers differently. And so, yeah, we can't say across the board every single person out there charging for pagan classes is worth the amount that they are charging for them. Or that the content of those courses is always going to be worth what is being charged for them. We can't say that that's always true. But in a general sense, yes, I feel that paying for pagan classes is worth it. If we're talking about is it worth it versus just is all this information available in books and online? A lot of information is available in books and online. And if we're purchasing books, that's a purchase as well. I mean, I always encourage people to look for things at your local library, get your hands on it for free, read through it, 
then you can see if you think it's worth it before you put any money towards it. And in the process, support your local public library system because they're doing fantastic work and we need to support the fact that they are there for us to have all these wonderful resources for free. And, you know, a lot of the time if they don't have something, they'll help you find something. So I'm always pro-library, go libraries. And, um, yeah, so that's a great way to find out if something is worth a later investment. And that's also why a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of groups who do charge for offerings will give you free content as well to kind of get a feel for that. And that's essentially what I've been doing on YouTube for the past 10 years and what all of us do here on Pagan Perspective. This is all free content for you. You get a sense of who we are, what our opinions are, whether or not you resonate with us, and that might give you a little input into, a little idea into whether or not we are someone that you would like to work with more in depth on a one-on-one -on -one basis or in a small group in an online discussion whatever the case may be or if you come to a, a physical event that is being held a workshop an in-person workshop or a class or something like that it gives you kind of an idea and in a way that's also what books do right when you pay for a book and then you read it and you think oh my gosh I love what this author is saying cool, and then you find out they're going to come to your city and they're going to do a workshop, you're more likely to want to go and pay for that workshop because you already know that this person resonates with you and you like them, right? So, pardon me, there's something on my eyelash that has been bothering me for about three minutes. Okay, so, autofocus. So, yeah, um, let's just talk about Obad for a second. So, the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids. I am not in it, but Danny, our very own Danny from Pagan Perspective, on their personal channel has talked about how they are in Obad and has done videos reviewing the different materials for the different grades, and I found those videos extremely helpful, so I'm going to link them below or maybe at the end of the video or both. Who knows what I'll feel like doing. But um, obviously I get along really well with Danny. Danny is one of my personal go-to resources for anything about Druidry because I know that she's an Ovad. And so that's one of the main kind of structures of Druidry that exists. Not everyone who follows a Druid path is necessarily part of an organization. But that's an example where there is kind of like I said, we, we don't really have any centralized authoritarian structure within paganism in general, but Druidry does have a couple of, like, organizations that people can go to for training. Obad is one of them. Druidry.org is their website, if you're not familiar with it. I'll put a link to that below as well. And I just want to say that when I watched Danny's videos about her experiences with going through the, the grades that they've gone through so far... And looking at the materials and giving thoughts, pros and cons, and things that, you know, could be better. And things that are really, really great. In those videos, Danny shared how much the course costs. And I was absolutely floored. I cannot believe that it doesn't cost hundreds of dollars more than it does. It's incredibly affordable. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, so... But it's all relative, right? So if you, let's say, like buying a car or buying a house or how much professional athletes get paid. Like these are things that I don't know a lot about. Like I don't know a lot about building motorcycles. One of my cousins um, builds and rebuilds dirt bikes and motorcycles, you know, stuff like that. He is incredibly informed and knowledgeable about the cost of parts of those types of vehicles. And so somebody could quote him a price for something, and I would have no frame of reference for that, but he would immediately know whether that was reasonable, undercharging, so you're getting a good deal, or in extremely overcharging. I would have no frame of reference for that. So if you have no frame of reference for how much workshops cost or how much you know, like a, a camp, like an intensive camp 
would cost or how much a correspondence course or an online course would cost, then you can hear a number and it might sound like that's a lot, especially if it's just it's just a number out of nowhere, right? It's just a number that's going to come out of your budget. But if you have a frame of reference for how much other things cost, generally speaking, or a range of how much they usually cost, then you can look at something and again, know whether it's right around average or whether you're really getting a good deal or whether it's a little bit higher and maybe you can do it, maybe you can't, right? So my frame of reference for this is like tenfold. (laughs) There's a lot of things that I pull from. One of the things that I pull from as far as paying for classes is yoga because I have taken yoga classes in the past and so I know that in my area a general, an average price for a drop-in yoga class, that's a, you know, you're just going to drop in for one class, one class pass kind of thing. You tend to get a discount if you pay for three classes at once in advance, then you get a little discount. If you're paying for a whole month, you get a discount, stuff like that. But a typical drop-in yoga class, which is approximately one hour long, taught by a trained instructor who has paid for their course to do it, which can range anywhere from a 200 hour course, which I personally don't think those are that great, but you know, they're doing them. I haven't done that yet, but other people have at least done that. Um, You know, they're still putting money toward that and they're still putting time and energy toward that. But so you're paying for a trained teacher's experience. Um, You're paying for their time. You're paying to be in a place with other people learning from each other. You've got the ability to have someone help you make adjustments in person, stuff like that, right? Drop in yoga class. Average in my area, $12 to $15 for one hour for a yoga class. So, and then you might think of if you're really familiar with tarot and the general prices that people charge for a tarot reading, then you might think, okay, well, this, you know, this type of service averages this much money. A yoga class averages $12 to $15 for a drop-in class. Depends on the class, depends on the area, depends on the teacher, depends on the studio. If it's something that has a really great reputation, you're going to pay a premium probably. Or if it's like the teacher that everyone loves and they're in really high demand, you could pay $25 for an hour yoga class. You know, it depends. But basic $12 to $15. So when places do like a one hour class or workshop or something around here, around me, that is pagan, (laughs) thank you, where's the word, Um, that is pagan or magic based, kind of witchy, and they're charging about $15, then I think that makes sense, you know, that's at at least that, of course, it's going to be at least that, I mean, you pay that much for a yoga class, why not? For a witchy class or a pagan class, why not for a meditation group? And sometimes it's, if it's like a meditation type of thing, oftentimes those are free or donation based. And depending on who it is and where you are, you have to think about things like if you're going to something that's free and they say donations are welcome, then you would want to find out or just be cognizant of like, Are they renting a space? Did they pay someone to have access to this space tonight so that you could come here for free and learn some meditation techniques and network with some people? Maybe throw them five bucks toward the rental of that space. Are they providing any kind of supplies? Did they bring in a guest speaker? Did that person have to travel there? Stuff like that. I have gone to donation-based workshops. Actually, I recently went to a donation-based workshop in Pittsburgh and so my partner and I drove it's approximately two hours and it was donation based so I messaged them ahead of time and I said hey guys we're coming up from Cleveland they know us we've been out there before for workshops with them which we have paid hundreds of dollars for a hundreds of dollars yeah it was over a hundred dollars for each of us uh, for a weekend intensive workshop uh, out there in Pittsburgh and um So they already knew us. So I said, hey guys, we're coming out from Cleveland. I know it's donation-based and I want to help you guys out. 
but since we are driving from Cleveland, as you know, we're going to have to pay for gas and tolls. Would you mind if I brought some supplies to share in lieu of a monetary donation? And they said, bring them, because what we were doing was working on making personalized kits uh, basically little witch boxes for ourselves. And we talked about grounding practices and built our own personalized kits of what we personally want to have in our little kit to take with us everywhere. So I brought candles. I have a ton of candles and a ton of herbs from when my mom used to own a gift shop, metaphysical shop type thing. And I don't need all of those to myself. Like I use candles, but I have, like, literally I have so many. <laughs> so I was like, these are thrifted candles. They're secondhand. We got a lot of these at garage sales. They are out of the, the consumer stream, right? They've been out of the consumer stream. They are secondhand, and I am bringing them as a donation. So I did that. Um, so that's something, and I know in Thorne's book, in Traditional Wicca, which I've just been talking about all the time since it came out, but everything keeps referencing it because she talks about so many good things in this book. She talks about, like, if you're going to go to a, a ritual at someone's house, like, nobody's going to charge you to come to a ritual and, like, do some magic together. That's not what's going to happen. They're not going to expect you to give them money. But you might want to ask if you can bring anything, like food. Is there going to be a meal that you're all going to share? Maybe bring a dish. Or ask if you can bring the napkins. Or ask if you can help them do the dishes afterwards. Or like Thorne says in the book, bring toilet paper. Because like if you're going to someone's house and you're having 20 people in someone's house for a day, those are things that are costs that are incurred by the homeowner that we might not think of. You're just going to someone's house to do some magic for free. Um, but yeah, you just might want to think about stuff like that. So paying for classes, paying for workshops, it's not always necessarily going to be money. Sometimes it might be like, can I bring something? Can I help out? Can I stay and put the chairs away? After the book signing with Thorne in Cleveland, when we were out here, a handful of us that were left over, it was like nobody had to ask us. We all just immediately started picking up chairs and cleaning the space up. And I noted that because Thorne talks about that in the book, and I was like, huh, See how that works? Like, that's cool. See, that's what happens when you have community that knows what needs to happen in order for things to take place for free. Now, if there's a class that's, um, like I said before, they're going to they're gonna provide you with something. You're going to go home with something. Like, even when we just did the witch kits thing, like, they could have charged us $5 because we were all going to go home with a kit. But they didn't. It was just donation-based. So we brought stuff and had a good time and shared experiences and shared ideas, magic together. Beautiful. That was totally worth a two-hour drive to Pittsburgh to hang out with people we really resonate with and pay almost $20 just in tolls, let alone in gas and everything, to do that work. Because we like those people and we like that work. So that's my other big frame of reference is reclaiming witchcraft. I went to my first reclaiming tradition week-long intensive witch camp three years ago now. Three, two, three, three years ago. And every camp is different um, based on where they are holding the camp, what kind of, so um, how much they have to pay basically in rent to have the space for a week or for a weekend or whatever the length of the workshop is that you're going to. And so they will differ based on that. They will differ based on what accommodations you've chosen. So like the camp I went to, you could either camp, camp, like you could bring a tent and camp, but I was traveling um, by plane, so I did not want to travel with a tent. And also at the time, I hadn't done a lot of camping by myself, and I was going to be by myself. So I didn't want to camp. <laughs> so, but you could have paid a little bit less to camp, and you paid a little bit more if you wanted to have a room with several other people sharing it. And then you paid a little bit more if you wanted to have a private room with one other person, which a lot of couples decided to do. Married couples or like you and your best friend just like really want to not be around people and have your own room. Then you could pay a little bit more for that. And what reclaiming does most of the time also is that it's 
a sliding scale. So it'll have a minimum amount that they need you to pay just to cover the costs of having you there as a person, to, especially if your meals are included. And also, depending on the camp that you go to, that will determine how many paths are being offered. In other words, how many different courses you can take throughout the course of the week. So the one that I went to, there were three main paths being offered that we could choose from. Some of the other camps that are bigger might have eight to ten different paths that you can choose from. And because of the nature of reclaiming tradition and how it works, the classes are always co-taught. So each one of those paths is going to have at least two, if not three, teachers who have been trained as teachers in the tradition, many of whom are traveling there, sometimes from out of the country, let alone out of the state. So everybody who's coming to the camp is collectively helping to pay for those teachers to be there. You're also helping to pay for the fact that they got trained by paying to take the courses that got them trained. And I am hoping in the future to become a trained teacher in the reclaiming tradition. So I already have a number of workshops and classes under my belt. And I think they're absolutely worth it because I resonate with that work so much. And it's where my heart and my soul wants to be. Now, I might not be willing to pay as much money for a class by a teacher who I really don't like as a person or who's spiritual message I really just don't resonate with. So that's always going to be relative. But that doesn't mean that other people won't be totally willing to pay that person. And it doesn't mean that that person automatically is not inherently worth what they are charging. This is not about people's inherent worth. It's about how much we resonate with something and how much we're willing to pay. A really good thing to think about would be Erase your bank account from your mind. If you had all of the money in the world and money was literally just a number that meant the bigger the number was, the more you loved something, how much would it be worth? How much do you love that thing? How many stars would you rate it? (laughs) You know, if you were going to review it, how many stars would you give it? Um, If money were not an issue, if that wasn't, a fear that you had, if that wasn't a limitation, if that wasn't a physical limitation, a number in your bank account, what would you feel that that person or that class or that experience would be worth? Because yeah, a lot of this stuff might be in books and you can buy a book or you can get it at the library or you can get it secondhand, but you can't be in circle with 50 other witches and living with 50 other witches for a week and constantly doing magic together and feeling what that's like by reading a book. Although the reclaiming tradition does have a book that replicates that experience in book form so you can do it yourself at home. Like you can read The Twelve Wild Swans by Starhawk and Hilary Valentine and it's broken up into three different paths elements and then an inner path and an outer path. You can read this book so many different ways. You can read this book all the way through and do all of the exercises as it goes through. It has seven main sections so that you could do it within the course of a week, but then there's three paths. So you could do the elements path for one week and then you could go back to the beginning of the book, the beginning of the story, and do the inner path for one week. You can go back and do the outer path for one week. And that's what I did when I found this book I did that myself. I bought this book secondhand. I went through the book. I fucking loved it. And then I registered to go to a witch camp and do it for real with 50 plus other witches and trained teachers. And just, I loved it, you know? So now, any other time there's a workshop, I know it's worth it because I know what that intrinsic value is to me. And I know that... If I'm a little bit strapped for cash at the time, I can do the end of the sliding scale, the lower end of the sliding scale. And if I have more money, because I feel that this work is so worth it, I will pay more. I will pay higher on that sliding scale. So for me as a person, because I love that model so much, even though I'm not a trained teacher in reclaiming yet, I'm just working toward it, the work that I do myself and the courses that I'm developing myself I took that idea. I like that sliding scale. So I offer a sliding scale. 
So if you can't do the higher end of the sliding scale, you can do the lower end of the sliding scale. And it's just like on Patreon, you choose how much you want to pledge to support different creators. And so like for mine, it's per creation, like per video or per blog post. But if you can only afford $1 a month, you can pledge $1 a month and set the cap at $1. So no matter how much I'm posting, you will only ever pay $1 a month. You can do that. And because we live in a capitalist society, as much as that sucks, um, your teachers do need money to pay their bills. And so, like, my Patreon money pays my car payment every month, and they know that. And so they get, like, little pictures of stickers that I bought for my car and stuff like that. Like, I bought a, a $1 sticker at VegFest, a vegan sticker for my car, and I posted it on my Patreon because I was like, hey, you guys help pay for my car every month, so here's something new that I bought for the car. <laughs> so, stuff like that. Like, you've probably seen stuff going around online where people post, like, you know, people are willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a concert ticket to go see some celebrity that they love, or people are willing to pay so much money to go see a movie, or you're willing to pay so much to travel wherever, or you're willing to pay so much money for designer tennis shoes, whatever. But if you have a friend who owns a business who's doing something handmade, they're an artisan, whatever, they offer a service that is valuable to you, we are much less likely to actually pay them. But yet, we'll pay strangers all the time. So it's definitely a difficult thing. As someone who is also a creator and someone who offers things, sometimes it's hard and we forget that when people aren't willing to pay what we believe our work is worth, it doesn't mean we as a person are not worth what we think we're worth. It doesn't mean that we are not worth being able to be able to pay our bills, you know. It means maybe that person didn't make that much money this week. Or maybe it means they don't have a frame of reference to know that this is a good price, that they're actually getting a deal. You know, I have friends who, a lot of us really undercharge for our work because people don't pay us what it's actually worth. And if you look at the range that other people do charge for these things, you're really getting a really good deal, but because we don't have a frame of reference, or because it's your friends, so people think, oh, come on, we're friends, can't you pay me less? Like, I don't know, can my bills be less? <laughs> you know? So it's hard. It's hard. It's a sticky subject whenever we're talking about money. And that's why prosperity consciousness and abundance consciousness is something that I've been working on as someone who is trying to do a spiritual business. And that's why I paid around $1,000 last year or the year before for an ongoing six-month one-on-one -on -one coaching with a spiritual business coach who I really resonated with at the time. And so, yeah, I was a little scared about, am I going to have enough money for this? But that's what prosperity and abundance consciousness is about, is knowing that we are enough and we have enough. And sure enough, I put it out there to the universe and every single month when my payment was due, I had enough. I had enough. And that in itself is such a magical feeling and brings that resonance into your body that like I am prosperous I have enough and I am enough and I am worth this and my coach is worth this and this work is worth this and what we're doing is worth it now I'm saying all of this to you now because I'm having a really good day and I'm feeling it but as you might have noticed on my personal channel I have some more recent videos talking about the more depressing side of things and some of the times when I don't remember these things and the days when I feel like I'm not worth it and nobody's ever going to pay me what I'm worth and why am I bothering and no one cares about this work. They only care about it if it's free because there have been some assholes who have said that to me. There have been some people who have said, you don't do enough for me to pay you a dollar a month. Like I've been making free content on YouTube for 10 years, but it's not worth one dollar now, you know, assholes. <laughs> So yeah, those are my thoughts and 
I hope it gave you something to think about at least. Oh, I also want to say I did not want to address the other specific thing that they asked about because I don't know the other mystery school that they named and I didn't want to look it up because I didn't want it to be a matter of me looking at something and being like, I don't know, is it worth it or is it not? Because it really is going to be personal. So if you guys want to, you can go check out the other link that Christina put in her topic. I happen to already know about Obad through Danny and actually another one of my friends who is in Obad who also said before I did this video that they corroborate that it is 100% worth it. So yeah, I didn't, I just didn't want to talk about the other one or look into it because I don't want it to be about nitpicking some things personal worth. But I do know that a lot of the groups that my friends who I've met over the years, things that they run, mystery schools that they're starting, because I've worked with them and because I've felt their energy and I love what they're doing, even if I can't personally pay for a course or I can't travel to go do a course with them, I'll share their stuff all the time. I promote them as much as I can. And that is something else that I think people forget. It's like, I also get frustrated because like if I if I plug my own stuff a lot of the time on social media I can actively see a decrease in likes and comments and engagement with those posts but when I promote someone else's stuff people immediately tell me oh thanks to your recommendation I went out and bought it or oh thanks to your recommendation I went and signed up with this person but then if I say hey guys I'm offering this crickets and, like, I have to give people $20 off. Like, okay, dude, I've offered people things for free and had no one take me up on it before. So it really, you know, it ends up feeling like, what am I doing? Am I just not worth it? But I know, I know today that that's not true. But those are some of the negative feelings that we get around these things. Because we talk about, is it worth it? Can't you just get it out of a book? Sure. Sure, you can. <laughs> If that's what you want, I recommend this one, and I definitely recommend this one, although this one is more about um, just learning about traditional Wicca than actually doing stuff. But definitely the 12 Wild Swans, and of course, Starhawk's The Spiral Dance. These would be your two reclaiming tradition of witchcraft texts. They have a ton of exercises in them, some of which you can totally do by yourself, some of which are better with a friend or with a group. But yeah, you can totally do that. I found these books secondhand. You can get them through the library to see if you like them first. Definitely do that. Definitely do that. Don't don't spend a ton of money on something before you know that it's worth it to you. That I will say. Have a good one. I've rambled long enough. I love you. Prosperity and abundance to you. I want you to always have enough to give people what you feel that they are worth. That is my wish for you. And don't forget to be awesome. And blessed be. Goodbye.